My name is David Friedland, and I'm with EcoCycle. Um, and um, you know, I want to thank you for coming. I think it's really important that we we talk about composting. We make sure we understand what's happening in the next year. Um, and so, you know, you being here is helping us to work with the community and talk with the community about um, the new program. So, thank you for coming out tonight. Um, my um, my colleague here is Charlie Caminitas um, with the city, um, and he is everything. Uh, trash, recycling, and now compost for the city of Long Island. So it's really exciting to um, be doing a presentation with Charlie. So let's jump right in. Um, we're going to have a great opportunity for questions at the very end, so please hold on to your questions, write them down. Um, we'll make sure there's plenty of time that we can really talk about them and, and get those questions answered, answered for you. So tonight we're going to go through a couple different things. We're going to start off with looking at waste management in the city of Longmont. Um, you know, where we started, where we are, and where we're going next year with the new program. Um, once we talk about that, we're going to just quickly go over what is compost? What are we talking about when we say compost? And why should you compost? What is the value of composting? Um, you know, and then we're going to talk what exactly is curbside composting? What's this new program that's going to be coming to the city next year? Um, and then we're going to get into a couple myths, answer a couple questions, and then we're going to show you exactly how you can sign up if you want. Um, at the end of the program, and then we're gonna we're gonna just have a conversation, answer some questions for you. Thank you, David. You're very well. And thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Uh, I also want to thank the library. Thank you, Josie, for setting us up yeah. tonight, and uh, thank you, Chevrolet. Um, you know, I wanted to launch our conversation this evening with just a little background on the city of Longmont's uh, trash service. I, many people don't know that. The city established a municipal trash service back in 1948, and I think that was a great idea back then to manage uh, what was what's being produced by the community at the time. Um, the city had a landfill, and I don't know if any of you have ever used the landfill. It was closed um, back in 1992, but it's still out here, closed, and we monitor it for any leaks or any anything coming out of it. But um, we still have it, we maintain it so that it's, it's in pristine and it's not an environmental hazard. And uh, if you ever go out there, it's really beautiful. It's, you know, I mean, it's just a, a plain right there of, of prairie grass, and it's used for an archery range as well. But, but uh, it's right here off of, of uh, 119 near County Road 5. So, um, but it was closed due to the cost for its operations, as you can see on the slide, and, and it's really expensive, and then landfill space was you know, starting to fill up in that small location as Longmont continued to grow. Um, and now, today, and since that point, we've been hauling our trash that we collect at the city of Longmont to the Front Range Landfill, which is in, in Weld County, off kind of about five and a half in, in the town of Erie. Uh, they're great partners to work with. They, they help us. Uh, they work with us, and they manage their landfill in, in a, very, um, a very conscientious way. And then, Longmont added curbside uh, recycling um, to its repertoire in, in the 90s. And I have to throw some kudos out to our partners at EcoCycle because back in, in uh, before the 90s, they were the ones who would go around in that school bus and do some of that. Does anybody remember that? There's quite a number of people. I, that was really uh, very cool back then for you know that grassroots effort. But at one point, Longmont got so big and decided to say, hey, we're going to have our own trucks pick up and, and make it a larger municipal type of program. And, Many of you I've spoken to this evening said that their large 96-gallon container gets pulled on a very regular basis, so that's, uh, that's great. Um, again, uh, that whole concept of recycling is to help divert waste, and divert waste from having to bury it in the landfill, um, but, and to help divert some of our costs that we're starting to see in the front range with landfills. And the exciting piece here is what we're talking about tonight in the spring of next year, which is coming real fast, is we're going to launch an optional service for calling curbside compost here. Um, and it's going to start, and we'll talk about more tonight. We like to call it Waste Management 2.0. So 1.0 is, let's get recycling going, but 2.0 is taken into the next level. Let's look at Longmont's contribution to filling the landfill over the next 10, 20, or 30 years. Um, and just to keep our business and thinking forward thinking so that we're not getting stuck behind landfills or full 
uh, because we know that's happening. The population in the Front Range is really growing. It's growing here in Longmont. And scarcity of landfill space, as it says up here, and, and the ability to uh, build a new landfill is very difficult. I don't know if many of you know this, but um, in, in, uh, they closed a landfill up in the Cheyenne area, and they ship all of their, their trash they collect in Cheyenne to Alt. So we don't want to get stuck in that. And then also, recent, in the next five or six years, I think it's seven years, uh, they'll be closing the Larimer County landfill, which is just right up here, just west of Fort Collins. So what that's kind of telling us is the landfills are filling up with all the people that are moving here, which is you know, a beautiful place to live. It was gorgeous today. Um, but we have to really start thinking, not today, of what we're going to do with our trash, but for the future. How are we going to manage that for our kids or our grandkids or for our future generations? So the concept we talk about is waste diversion. Um, and that, simply put, is putting less stuff in the landfill. And really, it's, it's the best approach we have to maintain what we have in our, for, our, for our financial future. Um, my experiences in the sanitation industry, uh, I look around the country and I see in the West Coast, I see easily landfill rates that are $40, 50 $60 a ton. On the East Coast, they're 100 or higher per ton. They're still very inexpensive here in the Front Range area, but we're headed that way. Uh, in the time I've worked for the city of Longmont, our, our, our rates have increased. You know, We're still lower than the national average, but they're going up. So poisoning ourselves for a good business future. Uh, and then the last bullet there just says, these small changes we're making today will really benefit long run, well into the future. So what's really exciting is we're, we're, we're doing compost, but we're also expanding our trash collection options. I shared with one or two this evening that right now we have a 96 gallon container and a 48 gallon container, but we're also gonna start to offer in the spring um, what we call the virtual 24 gallon, which is really our 48 gallon container, and it's going to have a different colored lid on it, but we're going to collect it every other week. So virtually, you're going to get a 24 gallon service at a lower rate as well. And that's what we call pay as you throw. Um, it's a modern approach uh, to paying for trash. I met a number of people tonight, and they said, well, we only make a little bit of trash every week. And uh, that makes sense to me. Why should you have to buy the jumbo container if you only make a little trash? Or conversely, if you have a large family, you need a large container. Those options will be available for you. And uh, in addition to that, again, it's going to be our, what's exciting for everybody is the, is the voluntary program we're calling curbside composting. Um, it's an opt-in model that gives you the opportunity to, to choose if you want to do that service or not. So it's not mandatory, it's not required if you want to do it, it's there. It's really just another, another way to reduce your trash. It's another, another way to recycle, so to speak. And, and again, it complements recycling. So you have your, your metals and your plastics you can recycle, you have your greens and your leftover foods, and then you'll have your, your trash, your things that just can't be recycled at this time. So we call that program local for composting. Uh, so um, I believe Dave's right now going to start talking a little bit about um, the next slide, please, yeah. um, about what he does and how he does it. But uh, that's kind of a preview of the nuts and bolts of the big changes coming. So I'll hand the mic over to, to David, and you can tell about thanks for that composting. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I work for EcoCycle. It sounded like quite a few people in the room are very familiar with EcoCycle. Um, is there anybody who was actually on those trucks when they, yeah, when they went around? Yeah. Awesome, thank you so much. So, EcoCycle started in 1976, and it was truly a grassroots community-based effort, and that's what we try to continue to focus on. We're about going in the community, educating, and trying to help people, you know, make the positive change that they want to see in terms of zero waste. Um, and really one of the niches that we found ourselves in is that education role. And we really do think that we're experts in recycling, composting, and zero waste. So we like to share that knowledge, and that's what we're trying to do here a little bit tonight. Um, we also operate the Boulder County Recycling Center, um, which is where all of the recyclables from the city of Longmont go, from the residential sector. Um, and, you know, we're one of the largest um, nonprofit recyclers in the nation. There were quite a few once upon a time, 
we're one of the only um, that's still around. So it's really an amazing community um, community benefit, community asset. So what is compost? Um, anybody want to give me a, any any backyard composters sitting here who want to give me a quick um, quick their own spin maybe on what composting is? Maybe not taking exactly on this. Anybody? Anything organic. Okay, anything organic, right? So it's just organic material breaking down that we then turn into a soil supplement that we can use in the garden. You can use it on landscaping. It's really, you know, anywhere where you have soil. So why curbside composting? Why should we be composting at all? Well, um, for starters, when you put food, yard waste, organic matter in the landfill, um, and it breaks down without oxygen, um, without water, without sun, um, it releases methane. So if we instead compost that material, we're able to completely eliminate those methane um, gas um, emissions. Also, we create a valuable soil amendment, like I said before, that we can add to our Colorado soils, which is great for everyone. Um, and you know, by not putting these materials in the landfill, we can reduce groundwater pollution and landfill runoff from those materials. Um, and also, like Charlie said, if we're taking that material, we're diverting it out of the landfill, we're able to save space and we can delay building new landfills, which is very costly. So curbside composting. Um, it's, it's very simple. You put your food, any soil or shredded paper, your yard waste, your branches, in that bin that you saw in the back there, and it, it's picked up every other week. It's really that simple. It's then going to go to a large commercial facility down in Boulder, um, operated by Western Disposal, um, and they're going to put it in these large windrows, um, these big piles of compost, and they're going to cook it, and they're going to create new compost that you can add to, like I said, your yard, your yard, anything like that, um, in the future. And it gets so hot that it destroys any you know, weeds or any diseases. Don't have to worry about it in this process. So what can go in the compost bin? So I'm going to slow down just a little bit here so we can just make sure that we um, really look at this slide together. Um, so first of all, like I said, any soiled or shredded. And finally, um, some of you might have the compostable cups in your hands. Um, any specifically designed compostable products. And what we want to look for is this symbol, which is a little hard to see here. Um, it's also right here. Um, and that means that it's certified compostable. Some products out there will say they're biodegradable or you know that sort of thing. Um, those aren't certified compostable. That's a national standard um, that you know we need to make sure we're using so it actually breaks down. A lot of those other products, um, they might have a little bit of plastic in them, and so they actually do break down into smaller pieces, um, but they don't break down fully. And then if we put those in the compost, we'll have little tiny pieces of plastic. Uh, in our compost. Yeah, um, so that's the really um, thick um, type of, it's kind of paperboard it feels like almost, um, and it basically has a coating on it um, that is, is plant-based, um, and so it can, it can break down the compost but it's compostable as well. Yeah, good question. So speaking of um, the plastics, um, what can't go in your compost bin? So um, first of all, no recyclables, right? Um, no aluminum, no plastic bottles, things like that. Um, no metal. Um, and then no plastic, so no plastic bags. Um, if you put your compost in a plastic bag, that's fine. Just dump it out into the bin, and then take that plastic bag and go and recycle it at the Waste Diversion Center, um, something like that. Um, and anything, like I said, anything plastic-coated coffee cups, um, to go food containers, um, plates that have paper plates that have a plastic coating on it. Um, and we want to make sure that we're not putting those in the compost bin because the plastic is really hard to, to you know, keep out and to you know make sure it's not contaminating the whole bunch. Is that a, is that a sugar packet up there by the top? It is, yeah, sorry, this isn't very high resolution. Yeah, that's a sugar packet right there. So, you know, it is paper on the outside, but it's got a plastic coating on it as well. Keep it dry. Yeah, right, exactly. 
Um, and some items, you know, used to have a wax coating on them. Um, and that's not really very common anymore. So, you know, that could be compostable if it's a wax coating. Um, so we want to check and make sure. Um, but most likely, most likely it's a plastic coating in almost every instance. A milk carton typically has a plastic film over it. Yeah, plastic coating. Yeah. yeah. Frozen food boxes as well. Yeah. It's a really good example. Yeah, plastic coating. There's a few, there's very, very few. Amy certified organic has just a thicker cardboard, um, but most everything else has a plastic coating. So let's jump into a couple common questions that we hear all the time. Odors. Um, won't the compost bin smell? Um, you know, during the very, 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 very hot days of summer, yeah, it's, it will. That's okay, right? But um, we can put, we can put um, a couple of these things. Um, we can make sure that it's not quite as bad. So um, bio bags, which you can buy at various uh, stores. Um, I think King Supers has some, Natural Grocers. And hopefully more stores around Longmont, now that this program's coming in, will start to carry those as well. Paper bags are really great, too. That's what I do. Um, and, you know, you can just dump all of your, your food scraps right off of your dinner plate, right into the paper bag. And that whole paper bag can just go in and it's going to keep the smell down, too. You can also, if you have space, you can keep um, the compost in your freezer. Um, and then once it's your day, you just put it right in the compost bag. Uh, it's very, you know, very easy. Um, also, if you put like paper or anything like that on top of something that might be a little smelly, that's going to help keep the smell down for you too. Um, and keeping the lid closed as much as possible will help with odors. Pests. So won't there be different critters and pests and things, um, you know, in my compost bin? So. You know, we're already putting all of these items in the trash. So um, we're just going to be putting it in a bin right next to it. Um, so it, it already exists in your waste room. But, you know, again, looking back to the odors, if you keep the lid closed and you try your best to put a little bit of paper or something like that on top of some of these uh, more, you know, um, attractive items, um, um, you know, you can really make sure that you don't, you don't pest in your bin. All right, um, dog poop. <laughs> yeah, we get this one a lot. Um, so any pet waste or human waste um, should not go in your compost bin. Um, it has bacteria and things that um, the facility is not, they, they don't believe they can get it out. So we just want to make sure that we keep the dog waste out. Um, if you, there's, there's a, a woman down in Boulder who is actually composting. Uh, dog poop. So if you do want to compost, there's your option right there. <laughs> this is really just to make sure that the compost, the finished product, is safe, right? So it's a it's a pretty big thing. So let's just make sure we keep it. Up. Um, so you know we get this question a lot about backyard composting. I already I already backyard compost. I don't I don't need to compost. Um, and that's great. Yeah, it's, it's great to backyard compost. Um, and we hope that because you backyard compost and because you recycle, you can downsize your trash cart um, regardless of whether or not you participate in the compost service. Um, but there are some things that um, you, can, you can put in the curbside bin that you won't be able to put in your backyard bin, like bones, um, dairy, things like that. Um, you know, special um, compostable products like this cup. Um, those aren't going to break down very quickly in your backyard compost bin. Um, so instead, you know, you can put it right in the curbside bin. Same with weeds and things like that. You don't want that in your, um, your backyard compost that you put on your garden in the spring. Um, so instead, throw it right in the curbside bin. You can throw them in their hole. Yeah, yeah. So in your backyard bin, you would want to make them a little smaller. It makes it easier for the bin to digest. Totally fine in the comp in the curbside. Put it all. Yeah, so she asked with, um, with you know, pizza boxes or anything like that, do we need to tear them up and make them smaller? Um, that's something that typically you do with the backyard bin. You don't have to do that with the curbside compost bin. You can put any, you can just put the pizza box right in there. Totally fine. Question. Thank you.
So here you go. Um, there's a couple different ways for you to sign up for services. You can go online. You can call. Um, the phone number's right there. It's also in the brochure that hopefully you grab. Um, we also have some forms tonight. So if you'd like to just sign up tonight um, for either downsizing your trash or signing up for the compost program, we would hap happily help you do that tonight. Um, yeah. Um, see if this works. If, and if I could ask, um, as the city uh, sanitation manager that's put this together, it, it will help tremendously if you're considering to uh, sign up for the service, to sign up early. It, it does a couple things. It, it gets you uh, started on that mindset, but also helps the city in organizing and ordering bins and getting set so that when we do launch in April, that it's a, a smoother launch. Uh, so we're looking at several thousand uh, customers just with compost and then with the trash size change outs. And, and my, my job would be to make it as uh, smooth and as uh, effortless for you all uh, so that uh, we have a, a real smooth running program. All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's a yeah. That's if you could repeat the question. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, she's asking about a bio bag, um, and I don't believe that the city is going to have those for sale, right? Um, but that's that's what they look like. They're green. Um, there are a couple different places that do have them. Costco has. Costco has them. I, I know natural grocers do have. So if I mean, at this point, we'll kind of dual conference now. Yeah. Uh, I spoke with, I just happened to spoke with the biobank representative uh, for the region, and we talked about a variety of different locations where they do sell compostable bags. So again, uh, the, the Home Depot, excuse me, the <coughs> King Supers has them. They have them at Ace Hardware. They're, they're not called Biobank. It's another brand. And there's a variety of other stores in town. Uh, and they're, beyond. Pardon me? Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond, Costco, and the variety. So, uh, as David said earlier, as, as the program is, is getting widespread here in, in the Front Range and in Longmont, Boulder, more stores are going to start to carry these. So you can see them, you can get them online as well. So they're, they're out there. And you know, if, if you can't find some, the city won't be selling them, but you can always call us and we can kind of point you in the right there. Or you can call um, EcoCycle. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so let's do some questions. Yes. So I understand that you now the city has the ability, so if we wanted to start getting used to doing this, that you could take it to the city if you have stuff that's compostable. Is that true? Or? Right, so the, let me just repeat the question from the camera here. Um, so the question is, can you bring um, compost um, to the Waste Diversion Center? Um, and the answer is yes. There's been compost there for quite a while now. Um, and you can certainly bring that over. You just have to show your, um, you know, your city bill so they know that you're a rate payer. Um, and you can get right in and drop your compost off at the compost dumpster there. So where is the compost dumpster? Yeah, um, the compost dumpster is right in the, right in the middle, kind of. Maybe. So, so at the Waste Diversion Center at 140 Martin Street, which is our recycling facility, you just drive up to the window where the window attendant will greet you and they'll point you in the right direction. There's a sign that tells you just pull up and pull to the left. And there's several bins in there where you can take your food waste. So again, if you have yard waste, that's always been available in the city of Longmont for, for many years. We bring that too. But definitely there's some bins for small amounts of food waste. Don't bring a you know, giant catering service over there. It's intended for small. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Has Walmart been operating a compost service? Um, yes. So, in, oh, so has Boulder been operating the, a compost service? And yes, Boulder has compost. The city of Lafayette has compost. The city of Louisville has compost. Um, Loveland as well has um, a seasonal compost program. Um, there's actually about 200 communities nationwide who have been doing an organics collection program, a curbside composting program. Looking at their operation, how they operate? Yeah, it's, you know, it, um, that's a complicated answer. Oh, have, have, has the city been looking at um, the Boulder operation? Um, for lessons learned and things like that. Um, and I would say, you know, looking at the city of Longmont's operation as an outside entity, as EcoCycle, I think the city of Longmont operates very effectively and very efficiently, um, but it's very different than the city of Boulder because the city of Boulder has, um, it's, a, it's basically a free market type of approach. So um, anybody can come in there as long as, and operate and pick up trash, recycled compost, as long as they offer those three things. Um, so, you know, there's been lots of, um, you know, 
the, the compost is going to um, Western Disposal, which operates a lot of households in the city of Boulder. So um, the city of Longmont is obviously working with Western, um, and so you know, learning lessons from what Western does in Boulder um, and all around the region too. So right over here. Thank you. Right yeah. So, uh -huh. um, will will composting still be available at the city um, the city center after April, or is it going to be discontinued once curbside composting? So the question, sorry, the question was, will we continue to have those food waste bins over at the waste diversion yeah. center once we start? The answer is yes. Okay. Again, it's for the really small usage. Uh, I spoke with a number of residents here tonight and said they think of very little amount in having that large container will work for them. So for now, the plan is to keep those there, absolutely. Great, thank you. Well, you go ahead, Yeah, right so here, let's go there. To do, choose the compost, do we get um, to come by the compost or do we get free? The material and the finish. Good question. So um, those people who are participating in the program, do they get compost back? Um, and at this time, the city um, is not going to be able to do that. Um, so I, you know, really trying to be as cost effective as possible and make sure that rolling out the service um, is, is, you know, the, the chief priority right now. Do you want to follow up, Charlie, at all on that? I, th I think that answered it pretty well. You know, our, at this time, the city isn't intending to, to offer compost pickup days, but again, it's a, it's a function of the cost and keeping the cost low. Let's implement the program, and then we'll reevaluate the program. It's a great question. Well, just following up on that, so what will you be doing with that um, fertile soil? So your question, the question up front is, what will we be doing with the material that we collect? Yeah. So again, um, we'll collect the material, and then we haul the material every day to the Western Disposal site, and then at that point, that becomes their product. You know, we'll pay them a fee for dumping it there, but then they have to work the material and turn it into from organic, from, from food waste and boxes and paper into compost. So, and then they will, they and it becomes their property, the and they'll put it on the market and then they sell it. Sir, if anybody's interested, they can take a tour down there. Mm -hmm. a tour of the facility. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So the, the the comment was, you can go down to Western and tour the facility. You can also, on that same subject, tour the recycling facility that's down in Boulder as well. A self guided tour, so you can do a two for one. Ma'am, go ahead. So, how concerned are you if people use insecticides on you know, sprays and stuff that goes into the compost bin? How concerned is the city about that? So, the question is how concerned is the city um, you know, about the use of insecticides on the compost um, and the, the items that go in the bin? Um, you know, to my knowledge, um, you know. The different facilities around the state, and certainly the Western Disposal Facility, they've looked at that, and that's a concern of theirs. Um, and they've deemed that it's okay. They're able, it's, it's a long enough process, it's an intensive enough process that um, they're not concerned that their product that comes out is going to be contaminated by insecticides. Um, or, or herbicides. Or herbicides, yeah, um, used for materials that are going in the bin. So um, it's a really good question. It's certainly a concern and something that. You know, I can tell you that EcoCycle is watching and making sure that you know, things are good. And I know Western is as well and other composters in the state. But at this time, they feel confident that it's not a problem. I have a two-part question for Charles. Charles, my wife and I, well, first of all, you mentioned that the composting program can begin in April. Is that yes. yes. So my question is, my wife and I are building a home in Longmont. If all goes well, we will close in March. When do you, when should we sign up for trash recycling and compost? It's a great question. So the gentleman is saying he's building a new home in Longmont, probably be ready to move in in March, if April. All goes well. Yeah, so typically the way the city planning works is once your building has been, I'm not a building and planning expert, but I understand once your, your building is complete and you've passed all your permits and you get a certificate of occupancy. At that point, you can call our utility building services and then sign up for your water and your electricity. At that time, you can also sign up for your composting, trash, and you can select your services. Um, again, the concept uh, I'll bring forward again is signing up early puts you on that list so you're one of the first people to get your container. If in April everybody realizes, oh my goodness, you know, prices are changing on trash and so forth, and I get a big uh, uh, 
order for you know signups, that might take a little longer to get your containers, but we'll get you eventually. Yes. So I can't sign up early. Um, you, you can't sign up early because at this time you don't actually have an address. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you keep in touch with us, and I'll give you my information and we can work on that. What part of town is it? Uh, it's in Prairie Village, off the highway station. Beautiful area. Thank you for that question. Yes, ma'am, in the back. So the question is, yeah. So the question is, can you put meat and bones in the compost server at the waste diversion center right now, like you'll be able to with the new program? And yes, you can. Um, so that compost is actually picked up by EcoCycle, and we take it over to A1 Organics, which is an even larger compost facility in eastern Colorado. Um, and it's the same process, um, and it, it will completely break down. Um, so the, yeah, the reason that you don't put meat and bones and that sort of thing. Um, in a backyard compost is just because it doesn't get hot enough. It's not a big enough operation. But the Western Disposal operation, the A1 operation in Eastern Colorado, both are very large um, and they're able to break those things down. So yes, you could put it in the, the compost bin at the Waste Diversion Center and you'll be able to put it in your bin in the spring. Yes, ma'am. So there's some part of the process where it's cold, like once you get the compost, because there's inevitably going to be people that threw a plastic fork in there, didn't know what was supposed to go in there. So how's that windowed out? Well, there's, um, there's quite a few steps, actually, to make sure contamination um, is dealt with. Um, so there's, you know, there's lots of different machines that they have at the facility, and they kind of shake it out. It's like this big screen. There's another machine that spins it around really quickly and tries to get you know, the, the heavier material out things like that. And also they go through and they look at it and pick it out. Um, so, you know, contamination's an issue. We want to do our best to be careful, but they have mechanisms in place to make sure that contamination doesn't become a problem. Yeah. Good question. Someone over here. Yes, sir. Two questions related. One, perhaps this is for you, but uh, does your plan Require a certain number of subscriptions for you to feel that it's worthwhile doing. And how are you doing in relation to that? Perhaps you just start out and then go over here and then reassess. I'm not sure. And then that's one part of the question. And the second one is, I, as I look at this wonderful group of people here, I assess the age of the <laughs> <laughs> little older. postcards in the mail, we have a presence on social media, our website, we're going to have mailers, we have um, that 
publication we send out to everybody's home every year, the post consumer is that calendar we send you and the guy is going to have more information. Obviously we work with Channel 8, we're going to create some messaging that's, you know, videos and all that. So um, looking at the 29,000 customers that we have and our target at this point from our direction from council was to go for about 25% of our community, I think we're going to achieve that target. Have you considered the possibility of having uh, some kind of uh, volunteer force I just did, and you're number one. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, the, whole, the whole idea of door-to-door uh, -door knocking, uh, you know, uh, having people out there, uh, in, in just being at community events and so forth, we have partnered with EcoCycle. We hire EcoCycle to go to the farmer's market, go to the art box, go to the festivals, go and do that. Part of uh, something we've done historically um, when we were working on our contamination issues for recycling is we actually did door-to-door -door canvassing, literally knocking on doors. We chose to not do that during the political season because you're already, number one, you got that going on, and then you had next light going on, so we just didn't want to overwhelm you. There is no doubt that in the future we'll do a little bit of that outreach, and it sounds like I'll tell our, our outreach contractor that uh, there's uh, volunteers out there. Yeah. <laughs> And let me just quickly follow up on that. So yeah, you know, this is something that we've um, been doing as EcoCycle in many different communities around Boulder County um, for a long time. Uh, and it is difficult, and it does require volunteers, and it requires people on the ground that are passionate, like all the folks in this room. Um, so, you know, EcoCycle's had a block leader network that we talked to about zero waste recycling everything for a long time, and we certainly, you know, plan on trying to use that um, group and those, those really, um, you know, passionate people to try to get the word out about compost. Because you're right, it's going to take neighbors talking to neighbors and answering questions and, and helping people understand what's going on. This, this question might relate to the point about getting to younger people. Is this a service that is available to renters? And how can renters get involved? Since the bills don't come in their name. So I can answer that question. The, this program, as we're launching it, is for all single family, what we call in Longmont single family homes. So whether you're a renter or you own the home, you're eligible. Uh, my recommendation would be if your bill does go to, if you're the tenant, call your, call your, your the owner of the property and say, you know, I want to pay for this, and, and that would work. Um, I've heard a straight simple answer, yeah, the answer yeah. is yes. Any, any <coughs> chance that it will expand to units? I have a house, so yeah. that's not my issue, but I'm just thinking. So the question was, I just said that this is a, a program we're launching. We're starting the strategy with single family homes. Will it go to multifamily units? And the answer is down the road, we'll actually uh, be looking at how to implement that. Multifamily comes in a variety of different shapes and it's very difficult to manage. Again, as I said earlier, we want to launch this program, be very successful starting off with our single family homes and then uh, we'll, we'll probably work with our partners to, to identify some multifamily units and, and again it's, it's harder even with recycling with multifamily units because there's a lot of moving in and moving out and the education is important it talks about our, our contamination rates the education is the other part of that that issue so the answer is down the road yes okay thank you yeah. so the, the comment slash kind of question is well, the comment, I suppose, is there it seems like there's a lot of misconceptions out there. And the question is, what are we trying to do to maybe help that? Um, and I think, you know, there's been a couple different things. Um, there was an explanation by the city, um, you know, a little while ago in the summer, I believe, right in August, um, trying to go exactly at those misconceptions. Um, and it probably didn't get as much press as maybe the misconceptions did, but um, we're certainly still working on that. And doing things like this, um, and continuing to get out there and talk to people, that's our other goal certainly, is to make sure people understand. Because um, one of the biggest issues it seemed out there was people assumed that the compost program was going to be paid for by the trash subscribers. Um, you know, that was a, that was a big uh, misconception that people had. And that's simply not the case. So we need to do a better job of getting out there and making sure people understand. Um, and I hope that you will all as well now that you've come to this and you've asked your questions, you'll be able to answer, you know, to, to help with that too, um, because that's what it's going to take to try to make sure everyone in our community understands 
um, you know, that, that's simply not correct. Yes, ma'am. So first I'm going to make a comment, then a question. So I'd like to um, just, you know, I need to apply both the city and ecosystem. You know, what a great, this is fabulous, what a great opportunity for our town. But um, and think about it. Think about when you were on that bus, collect, and I'm an eco-cycle blog, we go. But, but, but anyways, but okay, but, but, but when, when, when they were picking it up, that was once a month, and you had a little pile. Now it's every other week, and the, the, all the tops are hanging off the covers because there's so much stuff in it. So that's going to happen with composting, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I love yeah. it. But um, when I was a kid, I lived in the suburb of Boston, and they used to collect the garbage. I mean, you know, no, <laughs> I know it's thick. But, uh, <laughs> but, 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 but you, know, you know, I think it's a great thing, and it's going to be really good for the community. Okay, so now my question. So, so I'm pretty damn cheap, and I don't like to spend money. So those bags, I mean, you were saying that if you put paper over the food, it's going to help reduce the smell. Right? And the, we're only going to have to be concerned about the smell in the summertime when it's hot. Or, um, I learned from my mother that you put it in the freezer until the night before the trash. You run it out then. Uh, yeah, that's a really good um, idea. So let me just reiterate the comment and add to it as well, if you don't mind, that this is a pretty cool program. And I will say that you know the compost, like I said, there's about 200 communities in the nation that are now doing organic curbside collection. Um, but, um, you know, there's very few cities, communities, who are doing every other week trash collection. The every other week trash collection that the city is now embarking upon is absolutely groundbreaking. It's without a doubt the first one in the state of Colorado. And I look around the nation, I don't see more than 10 other communities that are doing this. So it's brave and it's, 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 um, it's pioneering, just like many of the things that the city of Columbia has done in its past and is continuing to do right now. Um, and then also, you know, paper bags are great. Use paper bags. And when you go and buy your groceries, you bring your own bags, just grab one and use it, you know? Um, and, and you can fill that thing up for a long time. You're I thought you said paper bag. I was like, go on, don't yeah, throw it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, that's a really good way. Um, if you also have, you know, an extra plastic bag, you can put it in the plastic bag. You can just dump it in the compost and then take the plastic bag and recycle it. The waste of urban center. So there's lots of options without having to buy those biobacks because I know they're a little bit expensive. Yeah, yeah David, and I'll throw out too, David, that um, nationwide statistics are food waste in your curbside compost bin is about seven to nine percent, and the rest of it tends to be your yard waste. So in your case, I don't know if you have a lawn or such, but putting some yard waste at the bottom, and then you put your food, and then you put a layer of grass, and then you put more, you know, some cardboard because you bought a pizza. Those are strategies that can really help to, to curtail the flies or the, the yuck factor, that we call it. So th there's a lot of different ways. But I can tell you that um, this program, Every Other Week Compost, is occurring in Boulder. And I've talked to a number of people who have the program in Boulder. And they, they like David said earlier, yeah, sometimes when it's really hot in the summer, maybe it's going to be a little bit more. But generally, it's not an odor issue. Sir? So regarding Great questions. So regarding publicity, and acclimated to the truths about this, yes. uh, would you or someone in your department be available to come to neighborhood get-togethers? Because I represent our neighborhood with the Community Resource Department, the NGLA, and we have get-togethers at least once a year, and we invite city council people, whatever. People from next slide was the last hot topic. Yes. <laughs> so David, why don't you tell us what we're doing tomorrow? Um, yeah, so, you know, we're we're meeting with um, quite a few different groups, and we're certainly available. Um, we will be meeting, actually, with the NGLA, um, the leaders of the NGLA for all the different neighborhoods. Um, the date escapes me at this point, but it's in the next year, or next, before the, before the spring um, oh, okay. time. Um, and so, but we are available to come and help and come and talk. We would love to do that. Um, you know, let's, let's talk afterwards, and let's schedule a time. So if anyone else in the room has a church, has a you know a book club, whatever you want, you know, let me know. Let's would love to come and talk to your group about this. Let's go right here, Mr. Right in the middle. What I was wondering, I'm seeing with the rates, it's by what people are using. 
you know, water, everything. You know, so more you, you use, the more you use. And the same with, I'm seeing that eventually you're going to be charging as rating bill, our rates are going to be based on how much garbage we provide. Now, the question I have is, is, is that going to happen? And the second part of that is, is what do you, you I'm, sure, I'm assuming you projected out that the increase in costs are going to be in, say, five, ten years from now, that this may help reduce it, the cost, if successful, but this could be going on. Absolutely. So your question is around, uh, if there was sort of what you hear, the water rates and power rates are pay as, you, pay as you use. And that's why we're using this nomenclature pay as you throw. And we are indeed in uh, 2017 enhancing our current pay as you throw program. So trash with a small container is cheaper than a large container. And then we're offering that virtual 24, which is even lower to that. Um, and it's, and it's, yes, you're correct. It's all putting it in place to say that those that use more, have more trash, pay more and less. So we're doing that. And if you look in that brochure that we have around here, it'll, it'll really have all those rates in them because the bigger trash is going to be more expensive. But, but you're absolutely correct that we're looking into the future because we know that they're going to close another landfill. Mm -hmm. And private sector, and this is how the market is, it's going to cost more. So um, as we're doing it now, it's putting off rate increases for us. We have the second or third lowest rates of sanitation in the state of Colorado, and I intend to keep it down there for you guys. And, and realize that those rates that you pay for trash also cover a variety of other services that we offer you. So I hope I clarified that question. Thank you. Yeah? This is a postscript to that. I noticed there's only one size of compost bin. <laughs> is, does the future hold options around the size for the compost bin too? Because so, so there's, there's a, a 96 gallon offer that we're offering you for compost. And the question is, does the future potentially offer a smaller container? And right now it does not. It, it's in there, we're thinking about it. You know, one of the things that we're doing basically is we're, we're going to realize that with our rate changes and the virtual 24 that we're doing next year, that we're going to see, we did, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. We had a consultant come out and do some analysis on, our, on your trash. And what we found out, and it was on a, another slide in a different presentation, is 70% of our uh, residents are oversubscribing to the trash service. Basically saying, I have a big can, but I don't fill it every week. So um, that's leading us to have these smaller containers. Once we make our rate changes for pay to throw, uh, we're, we're already seeing changes of people going from large containers to small containers now. Um, I can't tell you how many containers we've been exchanging recently. Um, but with that said, um, kind of losing my track, but we will eventually look at that. Oh, I know where I was headed with that. So with, with that migration to smaller containers, we're going to have a lot of these large containers left over. So part of our program to keep costs low is that we're going to, instead of just throw those away or melt them down, we're going to reutilize those. And uh, all the big, large trash cans just put new lids on them. And that'll help control rates for everybody who wants to participate in, the, in these programs. But back to your question down the road, we may look at that, but we need to utilize those containers. Mm -hmm. Just one over here. You don't have to put it in the bag at all. You just fling it right in. The yeah, so the right, yeah. So the question was shredded paper. Can you just put it right in the bin? Um, and the answer is yes, you certainly can. Um, and you can do that with any of the materials that can go in the bin. You do not need to put them in a bio bag. Um, that's simply for ease of use and convenience to you. Let's go right here. We'll get to everyone. Else. So, you know, so the question is, how much material could be diverted? Um, and in terms of actual tons, Charlie, you might have a, a good answer to that one. So in our analysis that we provided to council and, and, and moving towards a target of 25% of our customers participating, we are projecting about 5,000 tons of material less going to the landfill and being 
come posted? Per year? Per year. Per year. Per year. I'm sorry. How much trash? We currently collect on average 20, 28,000 to 30,000 tons of trash a year. So that's a significant amount launching a program like this, expecting maybe 25% of our, our population to participate. Imagine if we had 50%. trash and compost container sizes. And that's a, a misconception. So I'll, I'll clarify. Somebody in, in the, I called the phone number in, in my yes. newsletter, and they're the ones who told me that. So <laughs> there isn't a charge to change your trash size. So you can do that. That's a different program than composting. So if you have a large container and you want to go to a smaller container, you just call us up to our, our service center, our call center. We'll write up a work order and we'll, we'll change out your cart. Well, we typically like to do that no more than twice a year because we can't run around town all. But there is no charge to reduce your trash size. They'll just, from that point of your cart delivery, you'll be charged that different rate. So there's not a delivery charge. With the compost program, though, um, there, there is a, in our ordinance a fee that if you, if you sign up for compost and you don't keep it for at least a year, that there's a, a take back fee. And I, off the top of my head, I want to say it was $40. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, don't tell everybody, but as we launch this, we want to launch this program in a very, um, in a very nice way. So we want people to use the container, we want people to be successful with the container, and I think we'll have a little attitude as we launch the program. Did that answer your question well enough, There's one right here in the middle. That was my question. Okay. My question was if you wanted to downsize your... You start out with the smaller container, and then you want to go to the virtual. Just give us a call and write a service order, and typically in your next cycle, we'll change it out unless I get 5,000 people to sign up. Okay. It is a little longer. And like I said before, if you know you want to change your trash size right now, for example, if we have some forms, we would be happy to help you tonight. Yep. Save money. Yeah. Uh, my son is in Lafayette, and he's yeah. in the compost program, and we're really excited that getting it announced because we were always jealous. But um, they have a problem with fruit flies because they keep a little bit on their kitchen counter that goes out to the recycling once a day, and they get fruit flies. So, yep, any answers? Yeah, you know, it's the same answers before. It's, you know, if you have a bag, bag it um, and keep it closed on your indoor compost bin um, and on your outdoor, and it will keep you know, those flies down for sure. Um, it's really, you know, the, the keeping it open, having it open is what is what will get you flies. So just being diligent about trying to close that lid if you can. Yeah. There was one over here that a little while ago that I, I think I missed. No? Okay. Let's keep moving. Yes? So are there programs in place now for restaurants and large companies to be composting, or is that something that's involved with the program? Um, so the city, and Charlie can answer a little bit more about this, but the city doesn't um, service businesses. Um, so, you know, businesses in the city of Longmont certainly can get compost if they want, um, and there's a variety of waste haulers um, who, who can service them. Um, and, um, you know, I'm not sure of the numbers of people, of businesses who, who have that at this, at this moment in the city, um, but they can certainly get it if they want it. Um, and I do know that in the, you know, the Front Range region, region um, the, the large producers um, are working with um, A1 Organics a lot. Um, who is out in eastern Colorado, like I talked about before, to, to divert that waste <coughs> and to compost it um, through their facility, too. So. Do you just think restaurants are like a good place yeah, to it's a regular compost? Restaurant. 
Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, I completely agree with you. It is it is a great place, and supermarkets too. Yeah. Um, you know, places like that, and um, you know, it's it's unique. Each situation, I'm sure, is unique. Yeah. But they have the option to subscribe to that service. Yeah. You had a question, sir. Question, not a question. I want to take this opportunity to extend two compliments. One, my wife and I have many reasons why we wanted to build the love one. Tonight, I discovered sincerely the very positive reason. Number two, it's based upon my professional career. Before I retired eight years ago, I was a state official for the state of Massachusetts. Part of my job in running the environmental health program, the which Salt Waste Management was part of, was working with communities all over Massachusetts to set up their salt waste management program. I'm impressed by the depth and nature of your program. So I'm going to compliment you from a professional point of view. Thank you so much. And it's a, it's a group of Carol, so whether we use a bag or not, there's still a potential for these containers to get kind of smelly and contaminated. Any thoughts from the city to, you know, the, a couple times a year, you drive a power washer truck around and you clean this thing out or what? For $39.95. <laughs> so it's a very interesting question. Is the city considering maybe washing containers? So the answer right now is no. Because, again, it's really a very cost a costly effort to drive around and do that. Currently, our program says the homeowner can, needs to wash their own and maintain their own container. Um, I have had instances where odd things have ended up in people's containers and they called us and we've exchanged them for them, but in the general, we, we don't have that uh, option. But it sounds like a great uh, opportunity for us in the private sector. <laughs> it's a great question, though. We get it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Did they do it in Massachusetts? Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's these trucks that drive down the road and pick them up and yeah. wash. That would not be fun. Very expensive. Yes. I mean, I just kind of have a pet peeve about these trash bins and people who just leave them out in front of their house and can't at least put them along the side. And now with the composting bin, I mean, there are people that do keep them, I'm sure, in their garage. But they aren't going to keep these compost bins in their garage. I mean, I just feel like this line of compost bins, <laughs> it just detracts from, you know, from your home. And it drives me insane. I, I don't understand why. At least you put them along the side of the house. Or, you know, I have, I have somebody on my street who leaves them just down by the sidewalk all the time. And, and, you know, I don't know if this is so so the, the question about concern that potentially people will leave more containers it's out for the curbside. Yeah. The city does have a municipal code that talks about that specifically. You can't take your part out too early. It's eight o'clock the night before and uh, eight o'clock the next day in the evening. Uh, if, if people forget Okay, so every once in a while I take my container out past that time because I'm traveling, whatever. Hmm. But um, if that's pervasive or persistent, well, I've talked to her about it. But yeah. Sometimes it's not the first time I've heard that. You can give us a call. I'd be happy to go out and talk to a customer and, and explain our municipal code and try to be civil about it. And, and, and sometimes it's a function of that I've learned from the past that, and maybe not in this case, but they're ill or they it's too heavy for them or. So, are there <laughs> but, but you can call us on, on those. But at least to get them away from the front of the house. You know, <coughs> but I know that's not your But it's about building community and knowing your neighbor and working that. And it sounds like you've tried. So thank you. It's a great, it's a great question. We are concerned. That's one of the other multi-family questions. Is not putting so many on. So it is 8 p.m. Um, so thank you so much for coming. Um, we're going to try to best to respect everyone's time. So thank you so much for coming. If you have more questions, or if you have a, um, you know, if you want to sign up, or if you have a, a group that you would like us to come and talk to, um, please, we'll be here. Come and talk to us. We'd love to answer any more questions or, or talk more in depth with you. Thank you so very much for coming. Thank you.